Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you. Krishna, Hare Krishna, you. dear devotees. Please accept my humble obeisances. This is Vrinda from Baltimore. I welcome you all to the daily call of His Holiness Chandra Moli Swami Maharaj. Um, Maharaj, we have around 20 participants. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Now. Okay, I'll begin, and you can uh, bring up one verse. Okay. Uh, first canto, first chapter, verse number 14. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gnajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesa Sunyavani Pasthyatya Deva Satarine Vanshikalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Pahibhacha Patitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadakar Srivasari Gaur Bhakti Vindu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this is a verse from the first canto, first chapter. It's about the uh, chanting of the holy name and Another principle is about fear. Okay, so we're going to read Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Uh, somebody can read the purport. I'll read the Sanskrit and the translation, and then we'll have a volunteer come forward and Read the purport. Apanam samstriting godam dhyanaman vishvasogranan tata sadyo vimucheta vyabibeti svayam bayam. Living beings who are entangled in the complicated meshes of birth and death can be freed immediately by even unconsciously chanting the holy name of Krishna which is feared by fear personified. Someone read a short purport. Hare Krishna. Vasudeva. Krishna Guru Maharaj, may I read it? Uh, whoever wants to read, yeah. Uh, Vasudeva, or Lord Krishna, the absolute personality of Godhead, is the supreme controller of everything. There is no one in creation who is not afraid uh, of the rage of the Almighty. Great Asuras like Ravana, Hiranyakashipu, Kamsa, and others were very powerful living entities were all killed by the personality of Godhead. And the almighty Vasudeva has empowered his name with the powers of his personal self. Everything is related to him and everything has its identity in him. It is stated herein uh, that the name of Krishna is feared even by fear personified. This indicates that the name of Krishna is non-different from Krishna. Therefore, the name of Krishna is as powerful as Lord Krishna himself. There is no difference at all. Anyone, therefore, can take advantage of the holy names of Lord Sri Krishna, uh, even in the midst of the greatest dangers. The transcendental name of Krishna, even though uttered unconsciously or by force of circumstances, can help one obtain freedom from the hurdle of Birth and death. 
Now there is a statement in the in the scriptures that every living entity who has a material body is affected by fear. <laughs> From Indra to the Indra Gopa. Indra Gopa is the smallest living entity in existence. It's a germ. It's called an Indra Gopa germ. And uh, every living entity lives in a type of fear. Why? Because the material body is perishable. And therefore, one is always afraid of death or afraid of untimely death by losing the material body. Um, fear is characterized by seeing uh, something outside of Krishna. In other words, one can develop fearlessness when one realizes that everything is controlled by, everything is owned by, everything is meant for Krishna or service of Krishna. Fear, everyone lives in fear. We're living in a situation now where fear has become very strong and people are taking extra precautions to preserve, preserve, prevent themselves from beginning, becoming affected by disease. <clears throat> so this fear is motivating people to act in different ways. But many times people become overwhelmed with fear and uh, that fear takes over their consciousness where they can't, and they actually are unsure of how to act in any and every circumstance. Um, fear is fortified or what we say nourished by absorption in the material. The more the living entity becomes absorbed in material life, the more the fear aspect becomes prominent in that person's life. So fear is strengthened by material absorption. As one diminishes their absorption in material activities, material desires, the element of fear becomes less because material uh, uh, life is characterized by fear, fear of not achieving, fear of losing, fear of gaining and then losing fear. And fear is everywhere, uh, especially in the lower species of life where fear is their, actually their character. Animals, birds, insects, they all live with an element of fear. And that element of fear protects them from being destroyed. But out of all the animals, the fish is the, is the animal that is feared the most fearful. The fish always lives in fear at every moment, afraid to be eaten by a bigger fish. Mm -hmm. and that's the way it is in the waters. One fish eats another fish. <laughs> So yeah, so fear is everywhere. Fear and fear, as we mentioned, means two, or the number two, which indicates that that everything in existence is coming by way of Krishna's energy, and Krishna's energy is under his control. So when people don't see that or don't recognize it or don't understand it or don't realize it they uh, become fearful. Oh, what will happen? Do devotees also experience fear? Yes, but there's a kind of fear that is called healthy fear. There's a healthy fear, the fear of becoming, uh, be, being fearful of falling into the material energy and being trapped by that material energy. That's called the healthy fear of Maya which helps the devotees to stay free from the entrapments of the material energy. But in general, the element of fear is everywhere. 
And uh, the whole idea of countries building up their armament supplies is basing on, on the fear principle. Eating, sleeping, mating, and fearing. Defending is an, is an element of fearing. So countries, you'll find that most countries, especially the more advanced countries, materially, they put a lot of time, energy into, and resources into building up armaments. Why? Because they want to create this balance of fear that if I'm bigger, then you won't attack me. But that doesn't work. It's just a false sense of security. But this is what, how people think. People, you'll see people in one of the biggest uh, uh, industries is making locks. People have locks for doors, locks for safes, locks for uh, everything. There's, everything has a lock nowadays. Uh, people are afraid that, that someone's going to steal their car, something in their house, locks. So this fear principle is very, very strong. But here, this verse is very, in, that fear itself, in its most personified aspect of itself, also becomes fearful of those who chant the holy names of the Lord, because the holy name can, these, the fear cannot affect one or touch one who is absorbed in chanting the holy name. Therefore, chanting the holy names of the Lord brings about fearlessness. One of the main qualities of a Vaishnava is to become fearless in the spite of all the elements around us that, cause, that can cause us fear. <clears throat> So by chanting the holy names of the Lord, one develops this mood of fearlessness. Why? Because one is connecting to Krishna. And as this verse says, then Krishna is feared by fear personified. In another place within the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the third canto, it says, the, the wind blows out of fear of me. Uh, death takes its toll out of fear of me. Uh, so different elements within the material energy uh, are characterized by their duties to the Lord because of fear. Fearing that they don't do their duty, the Lord will take them to task. In other words, they'll get punished. So fear, and we see that's a motivating factor in many of the um, religious societies who teach mostly on the principle of fear. And if you don't worship God, you're going to suffer. If you don't worship God, you're going to go to hell. If you don't worship God, you're not going to get what you want. In other words, they create this fear principle in the mood of worship, which is the lowest form of approaching the Lord. Devotees approach the Lord not out of fear, but out of love. Approaching the Lord out of love destroys the, the element of fear automatically. And the devotees don't fear the Lord, they love the Lord. And they know the Lord is their best friend. He's always their well-wisher. He's always there to help them in any possible way. But for the materialist, the Lord is someone who interferes with their sense gratification. That becomes an obstacle in for their plans for enjoyment. Who is a person that will make life difficult for them if they don't worship him. So they have this fear of the Lord. And based on that fear, they are in anxiety in everything they do. Anxiety and fear are like two close twin brothers, practically. Once you have fear, you have anxiety. Once you have anxiety, you have fear. So here is the remedy, chant the holy names of the Lord by being absorbed in the holy name of the Lord. One can push away 
even the greatest type of fear. And as it's explained in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, when one is fixed on the spiritual platform, they're not even moved by the greatest danger. In other words, they are completely uh, transcendental to the sufferings of this world and the potential in the because they know Rake Krishna Modike, Mori Krishna Rakeke. If Krishna wants to destroy, no one can save. And if Krishna wants to save, no one can destroy. And that's a fact. So if we take shelter of Krishna, one of the features of Krishna's relationship with his devotee in the form of Lord Nishringadev, he protects his devotee. And knowing that the Lord gives full protection, one develops fearlessness. And fearlessness relieves the burden of anxiety, which comes by living in a world that is characterized by fear. Everyone is fearful. And especially at the particular, this particular time in history now, all the news is all about creating fear in the minds of people by describing what is the world situation. Of course, they only tell you about the things that are considered to be things that are cause fear and anxiety like that. They don't speak about the glories of the Lord. If they spoke about the glories of the Lord in the news, then the people would be free from fear. And then people would read the news and get something from it. So this chanting of the holy name is the benediction in age. In age se asadi maya nasi baralagi harinam maha mantra no to be lagi. Chant the holy names of the Lord. It is the medicine, the panacea for all ills in this world, especially the element of fear. As Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita, fearlessness comes from me as the holy name is coming from Krishna through his mercy manifestation. Then in the same way, the elements that, that are byproducts of the holy name, such as love, fearlessness, happiness, charitable nature, all these good qualities are products of chanting the holy names of the Lord. So one who is fearless or free from fear, fearless doesn't mean foolish. Some people give this macho definition of fearlessness that one should you know, present himself as being a very powerful in all aspects of life and that way ready to take on any situation that comes that is not real fearlessness real fearlessness means to depend on krishna in any situation okay so we'll stop there any com comments or questions on fear Just recently, we had a major earthquake in this area of Croatia. I'm in Slovenia, but I'm 120 miles away. And the quake was so big, I was able to feel it where I was. And uh, the person, people who were closer to it experienced great anxiety. So much so that the aftermath is that many devotees who are living in that area are constantly being harassed by continual tremors within the earth. Something between 80 and 100 more earthquakes have come since the big one on a smaller level. 
try to imagine living in that situation where at any moment you feel this shaking going on and you don't know how severe it's going to be. So this is the material world. The material world will automatically cause us fear. But the solution is take shelter of the holy name of Krishna. And by the mercy of Krishna coming through his holy name, one can transcend the elements of fear and be fixed in what we say pure consciousness or that consciousness that's not disturbed by what goes on around. Please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Your Holiness. Thank you for choosing this verse to speak on. Um, I'm just uh, mulling over what Your Holiness explained about fear and the anxiety that is so pervasive everywhere. Speaking of ourselves, we know because we hear the philosophy over and over again, you're not this body, you're eternal spirit soul, you, the real you will never die, it can never be cut to pieces, etc. But in a particular situation, I become fearful. I'm afraid of driving, I'm afraid of going out in the streets, I'm afraid of so many little things, though I know I'm not this body, still I am fearful of the material energy in some form or the other. So. Is this something we can overcome by chanting the holy names and making progress in that area? We will overcome this and come to our real state of understanding we are not this body? Yeah, you go about your normal duties and keep Krishna foremost. Then you can gradually come to the point of becoming free from the anxiety that your mind creates. The mind will always create these things. But if a devotee knows that nothing can happen without the grace of the Lord. So we don't want to do anything that will cause the material energy to act in such a way as to implicate us. So we stay within the boundaries of proper behavior and activity. But within those boundaries, we can become completely free from all these negative qualities, especially fear, fear, simply by remembering Krishna. And knowing Krishna says he is the he, he's the supreme protector. If we don't have that faith, then we'll be affected by our responsibilities in this world. Okay. Yes, Guru Maharaj, thank you so much. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to you. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for choosing this topic. Uh, actually, uh, just today I listened to another class which uh, had the same uh, same topic, and uh, there was something uh, uh, interesting about. Um, uh, there was the example that sometimes we have fear from, uh, like things like like bugs, which actually bugs cannot hurt us. So. Um, so what can be the reason for that? For what? Uh, that kind of fear, like like fearing for from uh, spiders or things like that. But 
we we are we cannot be harmed uh, things like things mm -hmm. like that. there there's yogis that live in the jungles they live with lepers tigers insects that are deadly but they're free from that because they're free from fear these animals don't bother them if you're fe fearful then these lower animals will they they pick up on your on that fear energy and they will attack you so yeah just like if you're fearful and you're in a range of a dog the dog will pick up that energy and start barking really loud uh, because these animals they can sense they have a higher sense senses than we do of the energies they don't know they don't understand it but they can they experience disturbance and therefore they react so um, what to do is prevent prevent yourself from getting victimized but at the same time you know stay close to people. the answer is to chant the holy names of the lord and to stay connected with krishna thank you very much Hare krishna uh, well. Anyone else? As a follow-up question, Guru Maharaj, I want to ask this. If we are not completely on the pure platform, we have not reached a high level of consciousness, but just say, for some reason, you know, we come across a situation, we are in an accident and we are giving up our body, then will Krishna's grace help us to remember him, even though we may not have reached that platform of complete uh, fearlessness or purity or um, transcendence? Yeah, of course. Everything it depends on the mercy of the Lord, but one has to live in such a way as to bring the mercy of the Lord into their life. But devotees are generally protected by the Lord, even if they don't ask for it. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. That is very reassuring to hear. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisance as always to Srila Prabhupada. All good is to you. Yeah, I will always Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I have a question uh, not related to the topic. Guru Maharaj, can I ask that? Yeah, of course. Um, so as we were reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, I got it out that um, there it is mentioned like um, uh, Lord Lord Vishnu, uh, Lord Shiva, and Lord Brahma are the directors of the three modes of material nature. So um, I, I was just wondering, like um, some, um, so how uh, they are not, so I just want to confirm with you that they are not influenced. Like uh, uh, whenever we say that uh, the Lord Vishnu is related to good mode of goodness and Lord Brahma is related to mode of passion, like that. So can we understand that they are not uh, affected by those material modes, Guru Maharaj? Yeah. Well, it says because Brahma has to touch the mode of passion for creation, sometimes he gets affected by that. Shiva has to touch the mode of ignorance for sometimes giving benedictions to, to demons, he also becomes affected by that. 
Lord Vishnu was never affected. He's always in the transcendental position. Therefore, he's in charge of the mode of goodness. But these great controllers, you know, can also sometimes exhibit material uh, inebriates where Brahma chased after his daughter. Um, Shiva gave a benediction to Rikasura and Rikasura turned around and tried to use the benediction on Shiva. Shiva had to flee from the place. So mm -hmm. you see these great controllers because they have to touch this material energy in order to do their service to the Lord. They sometimes become affected by that. Okay, so, um, so Guru Maharaj, um, this Lord Brahma um, has uh, kidnapped the cowherd boys and the cows and everything um, in the in the Vrindavana. And it, can we uh, relate that pastime to uh, to this concept, Guru Maharaj? Um, yeah, yeah. Brahma became bewildered. Okay, that's how it's called. The, he the got Brahma. Impressed. Baba Mohan Leela, how he became bewildered. He didn't recognize that this cowherd boy was the supreme worshipful Lord. He thought he was just some powerful demigod and he misunderstood Krishna. Therefore, he wanted to test this person who killed this very powerful demon named Agasura. But trying to test Krishna, you know, what was his reason for testing Krishna? Because he thought he was more powerful. But Krishna showed your power is nothing compared to mine. So that means uh, we can think that uh, Lord Brahma came under the um, influence of mode of passion. Yeah. yeah. Mm, obviously, he became. Well, yeah. There's there's a controversy. Some people who are followers of Lord Brahma, who worship Lord Brahma, don't accept this leela. They say he cannot be, but this Leela indicates he can, because Krishna is so powerful, he can bewilder anyone. He even when he performed that Brahma Mohan Leela, even Lord, even Lord Balaram, who was personally present there, at one point became, couldn't understand what was happening when he saw how Krishna expanded himself into uh, so many calves and cowherd boys and how they were being, how they were reacting. He was thinking, what is this? Is this a mystic yoga, a yogi that's come? Finally, he understood it was Krishna, but initially, so even Lord, even Lord Brahma and uh, Lord Balaram appeared to be bewildered by Lord Krishna. Krishna's power is supreme. It's above everyone. Mm, that's Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. There is a class of people that don't accept this pastime, although they're Vaishnavas. <laughs> there are Vaishnavas, but they don't accept that Brahma can be bewildered. So they have, a, they have problems with this pastime. <laughs> but our acharya is cleared up that Krishna can bewilder anyone <laughs> at any time. He did it with Lord Shiva when he transformed himself into this beautiful Mohini Murti. Lord Shiva went mad and started chasing after this female form who was actually the Supreme Lord. So even Shiva became bewildered. Shiva is, he's Dira. He's the one of the most Dira of all living beings. Sober. But he was bewildered by Krishna. I'll be right back. Get ready for your next question. I have to do one thing on the altar here.
Okay. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Maharaj, there is a question uh, on the chat from Janhua Mataji. She's asking, uh, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. I have a question on renunciation of the sins. Does it not produce karma? What is the question? Renunciation of the sins, does it not produce karma? What, is, what, what does it mean, renunciation of the sins? What does that mean? Uh, I'm not sure, Maharaj. Uh, Janava Mataji, are you there on the call? I mean, would you like to explain? Do not commit sins as a renunciation, she is explaining. I, to me, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't compute. I get down, what does it mean, commit sins as renunciation? Uh, do not commit sins as a renunciation. Any sin, anything that's in the category of sin will have a karmic effect. Mm. Renunciation uh, is a principle that leads to devotion. Sin is something that takes you away from devotion. They seem to be two opposite categories. Oh. Anything material has karmic, karmic effects. Whatever one does within the, within the realm of the material energy there is a reaction to that, and that's called karma. Whether it's good, bad, or a mixture of good and bad. Like that. Only devotional service is free from karma. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. What's this one here? Does anyone have Maharaj's book on Chaitanya Charitamrita? Which book is that you're referring to? You mean my uh, compilation on uh, the PowerPoint, PowerPoint presentation of the points within? Yeah. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. All glory to you, Sorina, your holiness. Uh, Maharaj, I was, uh, um, I referred to your uh, website and there I saw one, I think it's a, comp I'm not sure it's a compilation or a book, but it's titled Sri Chaitanya Charita Amrita, um, Chaitanya Charita Amrita Revisited, yes. That is yeah, the one yeah. I was. I yeah, was, that's. It's, it's, it's about 110 pages and it's a PowerPoint presentation on the different topics within the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's a good reference if you want to look up anything in Chaitanya Charitamrita, you could go to this and find it easy. Uh, is there a hot copy, Maharaj, or, it is, or a downloadable? Everything is, this is, uh, this is done through the, through the media. Well, I could send it to you if you want, if you just leave your email address or I can send it to one devotee who could distribute it to anyone who wants it. Oh, but thank you. Thank you so much, Mara. That'd be really. Yeah, it's, it's quite helpful. I got some, some good, good uh, feedback from senior devotees about it, so. Um, I, um, is there anyone out there would like to receive it and then distribute it to whoever wants it? Uh, I have just given my email address, Maharaj. Okay. 
Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I can do that, Guru Maharaj. You can send it to me, Guru Maharaj, if you like. I can send. I was supposed to send you something else. Uh, uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yesterday you were telling about some um, some document about the initiation standards. Um, oh, the the, the uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's mm -hmm. newsletter. Uh, yes, All right, I'll send you that, and I'll send you my book also. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Even I wanted that one. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So anybody who wants anybody who wants a copy of it, just contact Mother Lavanya, and she can post her email address, and she'll send you the book or the uh, article that we talked about yesterday by Bhakti Siddhanta on initiation. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have a question about the very last line of this purport where it says that the transcendental name of Krishna, even though uttered unconsciously or by force of circumstances, can help one obtain freedom from the hurdle of birth and death. Just take it as it is. What, what do you, what's the problem? Well, does that mean that anybody, you know, they might come across as in Rath Yatra and they say, oh, here are the Hare Krishna, just by yeah. saying... Yeah, there, yeah, there's four ways, they, it's called Nama, chanting in Nama Bas, chanting jokingly, chanting der, to deride, deride something or someone, chanting mistakenly, accidentally, Prabhupada gives the example of the that in the Islamic language there is the word haram, haram. Haram means abominable. And so when one Muslim was being attacked by a boar and he, he chanted haram, haram, haram. So that H A R A M was in the word, which is Hari Ram. So he got liberation. Hmm. That's the power of the holy name, yeah. So somehow or the other, just getting people to chant the name of Krishna is the best thing we can do for them. Jai. Now you understood everything. <laughs> <laughs> By your mercy, Guru Bharat. Thank you. It's easy to understand. Everybody can understand. We just don't we just don't have enough faith. That's all. That's the problem. We need to increase our faith in the chanting. So, devotees, are there any more questions or comments from Maharaj? Okay, uh, so Maharaj, with your permission, shall we end the call here? Yeah, we can if you like. Uh, I think there are no more questions or comments. Okay, let's see. Okay, right, we can stop here. Let me see. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for that book, Chaitanya Charitamrita Revisited. Okay. Okay, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you want to end the call, you can. 